special shout out to Such a Hard Man for sending along the instructions on how to uh, calibrate a Boss DM2, which is the same methods as the Aquapus. Thank you, man. What's going on, everyone? Since I have this shiny new oscilloscope, I'm going back and doing some of the things I wasn't able to really do before. Uh, one of those things is calibrating my Aquapus clone. Um, this is the Such a Hard Man um, PCB for the Make One, the very first Aquapus uh, circuit. And there's some calibration procedures that I started to do offline. Um, so what I'm using, and what if you want to follow along, what you're going to need is a computer uh, to generate a tone sample. And you can also download a few apps and use your phone to do that. But since I like to take videos and upload them to YouTube, I need my computer to do that task. Because um, I run out of phones, funny enough. And then I'm going to take this... 1 8 inch to quarter inch jack converter and I'm going to use that to do some of this calibration procedure. Uh, the first thing I'm doing is generating the clock frequency or setting the trim pot for the clock. Um, basically the math comes out to with this chip is we're looking for 6.849 and I think this is going to be close enough. You can see in the corner here we have our frequency that's being measured. And there's a trim pot. So I'm connected to pin 2 on the clock generator, the uh, MN3101 chip. So I'm on pin 2. Be very careful not to be touching any other pins when you do this. And then I'm adjusting this trim pot very s slowly. Oh, and by the way, I have my delay on maximum. So on the front, you set your delay on maximum, and then you do this calibration, okay? Um, because that delay does change, and I can demonstrate that here, that delay does change when you change the delay. So I'm going to put that all the way on maximum, and then I adjust that trim pot to 6.849, right around there. These trim pots are very, very sensitive. So just the tiniest tweak of that will wildly change the frequency. So I got this as close as I physically can uh, within human possibility. <laughs> so I'm going to stay with this. One thing to really be careful, and this screwed me up the first time, is that you're going to see on most probes there's a 1x and then there's a 10x. And what that does actually is... Uh, put a pad in place. So if we're looking at our decibel meter, uh, we're at around 200. But if I accidentally flip the switch, we're at 20. So we're taking that uh, and dividing by 10, basically. And that's not good. If I was to go under the assumption, and oh, by the way, this is what I did, and I started adding an input signal, which I thought was zero d actually I, I couldn't get as much as I could but it was almost like at zero db levels um, I was actually clipping <laughs> the circuit and I didn't even know it because I thought that that was as much as that tone signal generator was coming out well stupid me I didn't have the right um, setting on my probe so now I have the tone generator um, putting out zero db which comes out to around 200 millivolts rms not peak to peak 200 millivolts rms um, and i'm checking that because i'm going through my cable so i have my computer going into the input and then i'm using my probe and connecting the ground um to to ground here so that's um makes the trigger a lot more stable okay so i'm testing the input signal and the the test signal we're going to use is 200 hertz today all right to bias the b uh the chip the bbd chip uh we need to have the feedback about a third of the way up and then 
the blend um, should be about halfway, but I modded this so it has a um, audio taper pot, not a regular linear. So I have to go a little bit further uh, to get the same sort of thing. So the chip is on, or the, the pedal is on, so we gotta be very careful. And what I'm gonna do is attach the probe to pin one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So pin seven. And we should see our 200 hertz making its way through the circuit. And this is the input going to the BBD chip. So this is going to give us like the cleanest wave, um, you know, basically a clean signal going into the chip. And actually, it could stop the, if you don't bias it, and I'll go through that in a second. If you don't bias it correctly, it will just stop passing signal altogether or start clipping. Okay, so that's out of bias. Um, and then if you go all the way to the other way, we're going to lose bias as well. So there's a sweet spot somewhere in the middle. Where, what are we looking for in that sweet spot? Well, we're looking for the signal to look as clean as possible and then up at the top and at the bottom with zero distortion or zero clipping or close to. Okay? So I'm going to actually... Whoops, not that scale. Look at the wave a little closer and I just want to look for any sort of distortion I think I'm right within range I mean there's a little bit of a forgiveness you can see like the bottom here flattening out and then if I go that way it's not as clean so let me go back one more Maybe this will be easier to see but I think we're right in there we're obviously passing signal so this chip is biased, in my opinion, correctly. I don't think there's much room. Yeah, I'm going a little bit more distortion that way. Let's go the other way. You know, again, this is pretty forgiving. You can do this part without a uh, scope. And you use your ears to basically listen for delay to pass through. All right, so that is setting the bias correctly. All right, the last thing we're going to do is set the cancel. Now, it's very hard, but what we're going to do is, I believe it's resistor 28 down here. Um, it's the one, there's like three resistors, and it's the one in this view at the top. So I'm clipping it, which is the wiper arm. Whoops. And, of course, it's very difficult, um, especially because I didn't leave any any wire length underneath so I'm going to hopefully just set it here okay whoops oh, fail always when I'm trying to be on camera this never fails when I'm not on camera of course I promise okay so I'm just going to hold it here and what we're doing this is where the scope comes in so again this is setting the cancel so since this is an audio frequency range uh, this cancel helps negate some of that and what we're trying to do is to make, see these two waves and how they're separating and we go the opposite way and they kind of come together but then they leave. We want to get to the point where they all come together as flat as they can be. So right there. Uh, I know it's so close. This is where those multi-turn pots really come in handy. Alright, so I'm going to print and this pedal is now calibrated and ready to go. Hope you enjoyed the video and subscribe if you'd like to see more of these types of things.